We are going off the rails. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show dedicated to Disney and Tangents. I am your host, Frank, and I am joined alongside by a bunch of great people today, including Jackie Gailey. Hi, everybody. And Rhino. Hello. Hello. I hope you're all doing well. We are about to have a lot of fun, and I hope you will go on this journey with us because we are once again heading back to Disneyland where we can appreciate the different sections of Disneyland Park. And we are actually going to move on to the next land we need to talk about, and that's Adventureland. That's right. We're doing some good old fashioned moving around the park to Adventureland. We're going left instead of right. But we could have bum, also bum, caught bum. up. We could have went to. It's going to feel weird having to do Galaxy's Edge with this. Not going to lie. I, yeah. I don't know how I feel about it, but we will have to do it at some point. We haven't even done it for Hollywood Studios yet. Huh. I mean, it's Ooh. been time. I think we've had enough time yeah. to reassess. I, I think so, too. And we're definitely going to do some assessing here on Adventureland. But before we can get to that, we want to remind you this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content and you want to support us, please consider booking a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. It costs you no extra money and you get the support of an awesome Dreams Unlimited Travel agent. So head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free, no obligation quote. Now, this is going to be a very easy topic to get through because Adventureland is just not that big at at Disneyland. I mean, there's a lot to love in it. I mean, basically everything that's in there I love. Everything I, I feel thing. like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For the for the most part, you know, I might be able to like point out a couple things here and there that I don't like, but for for the most part, I just absolutely adore everything. So we can we can jump into anything. Right from the start. I so. Okay, know, here we go. I know what I think your favorite thing in Adventureland is. Tell oh. me, sir. Breakfast chimichangas. No, that's in Frontierland, buddy. <laughs> Wait, what? Is it not in Adventureland? It is in Frontierland, where that uh, right across from the entrance. Oh my of- God, you're right. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm think. I was thinking. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh man. Well, now, now that's yeah. awful. But uh, I, I will say this. I love in Adventureland. I love uh, Tangaroa Ter- not Tangaroa Terrace. Good lord, I'm two for two right now. I <laughs> the world, world is happening. Tropical Hideaway. I, okay. Apparently, that's just, a good. Spot. I like to think I'm doing a night crawler, bouncing from place to place to place to place. But, um. I'm a big fan of Tropical Hideaway. I feel like for for from when I first went to Disneyland in 2015 for like years, I feel like that area was always I'd be like, what was over there? What was over there? And everyone would be like, oh, it used to be this thing, whatever. And, yeah, because because the, cause the Aladdin, the carpet's still on the ground. The like it's the mosaic on the ground is still there. Um, and I was always it was never open. It was a it was I feel like a use of like a waste of space. And then Tropical Hideaway opened. And I know it's like I'm not the biggest i'm not like a a a dole wet purist or anything like that if anything i like the citrus swirl better but um they have a lot of like fun options in terms of like they'll do um some fun like flavors but they do like the really cool like fancy ones where they'll add like the poke to it or like the the bits of like the fruit and everything like that but i also like that over there they have mochi and they have um the um the lumpia because uh or the bow yes yeah because uh, I will, I love Bao. I love Lubia. Um, it's like a good. I think it's a great place to like stop and take a few minutes without having to devote your time to like a meal. But it's like I feel like a little bit more than just a quick snack. But the last the last time that we were there, um, we had those peanut butter and jelly mochi um, mm-hmm. things, and I, I I saw I was looking at a picture of those the other day, and I was like. I remember sitting here at night with the the torches going and like the lighting and like trying to film this. And but it was like it was good. And I remember enjoying the stuff that we ate that night. Yeah. So Jackie obviously hasn't seen Tropical Hideaway because that's just been in the past four years. I think that was 2018 when it opened. And as we said, Jackie, it took over the space where Aladdin's Oasis was. So right beside the Jungle Cruise exit and also connected to the Tiki Room exit as well. It took up all that backspace. So that's where they put the Rosita animatronic. So, oh, yeah. 
where yeah. whatever happened to Rosita, she's out there at the tropical hideaway. And I, Rhino mentioned the Dole Whips there. I I do enjoy it for the Dole Whips. Not, not that much, though, because I don't like a lot of toppings with mine. I don't need the extravagant Sundays. I go to tropical mm-hmm. hideaway more for the atmosphere and also for the savory options because mm-hmm. I I like to snack around Disneyland for sure with the with the fact that I only like to really do quick service meals to expedite my time. Uh, tropical hideaway is a good place for it. And you know, the bow's overpriced, but it's tasty. The lumpia is tasty and it's just it's it all comes down to that atmosphere. But if I was to get a Dole Whip, I would rather still go to the Dole Whip stand that's at Enchanted Tiki Room because then, yeah. you know, you can take your Dole Whip right into the Tiki Room with you and, that's and then the watch best the show. Thing ever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it is. And Disneyland's version of Enchanted Tiki Room is just so superior. Like Walt oh. Disney World's, I love it. Uh, it's, it's a much bigger room and... You know, that means that means you can space out a little bit better. But Disneyland's is so intimate the way that they have the fountain that starts coming up and it feels like it's always going to hit the bottom of the birds, but it never (laughs) quite does. It's just there. There is something about the vibe in there that works so much better than at Magic Kingdom. But that's Mm -hmm. I'm not giving them an excuse to go and take away Magic Kingdoms. It's just I prefer Disneyland's. But even on top of that more than anything at Disneyland, I love, love, love the actual Tiki Garden. So before yeah. before you get to go into the auditorium for the Enchanted Tiki Room, they have all these tiki statues placed all throughout the area. And they'll start a show where it kind of goes over which what each god is responsible for. And, uh, you know, there's there's fire effects, there's water effects, there's wind effects. It's It's got everything. And so if you are into that tiki culture, it is a it is a must do. You need to get mm-hmm. there to watch all of the tikis and then also see the show, too. And uh, I. I I love the Tiki Garden area at nighttime, like a oh. lot of Disneyland. I prefer it at night, but it's it's cool in the daytime too. It's still a good spot. Uh and a good tip too. There's a bathroom right beside the entrance to Tiki Room. And I'm not talking about down. Like when you're going up the stairs, there is a bathroom right next to the door to get in. And usually only people use it when they know that someone else just came out of the bathroom. So a lot of times if it's if it's not that busy, it's a nice little private bathroom. So good little tip for you there that I have. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. They just fit smart things in little nooks and crannies. You know, I feel like, I mean, how cool would it be if, if the the fact that the Tiki Room here is so much bigger, how cool would it be if you could bring a Dole Whip in there and eat a Dole Whip in the air conditioning without it melting all over your hands? Yeah, I mean, you can, we can bring them in ours. It's just, the hard part is too, like it, the humidity, as you just said, the humidity melts so fast. Yeah. It, it just melts it straight up. It's because mm-hmm. you have to do that long walk away all the way around and then wait in our pre-show, which you never yeah. know how long that's going to be based on timing. So yeah. it, it's just, it's it's not the same at all. But uh, no. right next to Tiki Room, of course, is Jungle Cruise, which I, I don't want to just be that person and go over this over and over again, but the Disneyland Jungle Cruise is far superior to Walt Disney World's as well. Uh, it, it's not when it's a super, super long line and you have to go up to the second story in the the queue area that is always extremely warm and not very pleasant. But once you get on the ride, I just feel like I feel like the layout is done so much better. Like you, ha- you have that boring part in the beginning where you're just going past Indiana Jones Adventure and it doesn't pick up right away. But then I feel like it jumps into it and it gets going and doesn't really let up at any point in time. And, uh, you know, it, it does have its little unique touches to it, like especially with the piranha. That is, that is my mm-hmm. absolute favorite section. But the piranha, I feel like... They haven't been working real well the past couple times I've seen them. They don't they don't stay up as long as they did before and mm-hmm. they're not as aggressive. But I with with Jungle Cruise, I think ours does feel 
ours feels more remote and feels like you're traveling further and further. But the thing that will always kill me with Walt Disney World is is the temple going through. I don't like yeah. the temple. And Disneyland cuts that out. And yeah. so it's like all of the highlights. I love Jungle Cruise so much. Yeah. You don't like the temple? No, I do not like the temple. Hmm. Interesting. It's just a quiet area. They sit down. They don't talk. You you see the tiger. You see the snake. I guess that's true. You see the monkeys. It does have that's a weird, it. like awkward pause. No, it does. Yeah. I'm surprised I like, those aren't identical with the two parks. I was really, really surprised the first time I went on Jungle Cruise at Magic Kingdom. I I couldn't believe that they weren't just the exact same. And I mean, they are a little bit more identical now because of the, you know, how they kind of made the new storyline for Jungle Cruise. So yeah, I feel true. like the new show scenes that were added in both of them, they feel like they fit the mold a little bit better. But, uh, you know, back in the day, I, I would have mentioned like there's a different Trader Sam. But now that Trader Sam is removed from the attraction, that's obviously different. But even still, like the animals, uh, the animals feel like they're a little bit more rugged at Disneyland. I, I don't know if they necessarily feel more realistic, but I, I feel like there's more of a, a charm that comes with with their age the, of, you know, how long they, they've been around that Jungle Cruise. And yeah, it's I I. I will say one, I, we're not here to knock anything on it. We're here to appreciate it. I will say though, uh, riding Jungle Cruise at night at Disneyland, I feel like it's not, the lighting isn't as good as as it is at Walt Disney World. Walt Disney World, I feel like takes on a new life at night. And at Disneyland, it feels like, yeah, we have to keep this open. So, you know, we'll have our little light at the front of the boat that illuminates it. But you should have just come during the daytime. That's really <laughs> the only thing I would knock on it. Otherwise, I, I absolutely adore it. I, th I think it's like there's something about being in the place where this like very, you know, um, very iconic attraction was like conceived, you know, like that, that, you, that you're in that original area. Cause like the Jungle Cruise is such a weird, very specific attraction with like, being like the whole point of it is that it's cheesy, you know, and that it's like these these ridiculous jokes and like we're making fun of ourselves. And like, I don't know, there's just something really fascinating about that to me, that that's the evolution of it. And you're sitting like where that originally that evolution originally took place because it was already that by the time it was made at at, at Magic Kingdom. Right. Like it was already all jokes and stuff by the 70s, wasn't it? I believe I know, it I was know. definitely more humorous. I need to go back and watch that awful behind the attraction series, uh, you know, because it did originally it was very straightforward and very much. This is a cruise through the jungle and mm -hmm. here's the animals. It was not jokey, but I, I do, I do believe you're correct in your assessment on that, but I also yeah. don't want to talk like an authority. I don't, well, I, I try never to, so. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> you already you already mentioned in your last uh, you know, when you started talking about the Jungle Cruise is that right next door is also what is insane. Uh, this attraction, the Indiana Jones um, adventure, it's the in, no. Yeah, it's Indiana Jones Adventure Temple of the Forbidden Eye. I yeah. I know it has the full name, a full like thing and I, I i told myself i wasn't going to forget anymore but indiana jones adventure either way um Best i just i was just blown away by this attraction when i go there because this attraction honestly could have opened like today and it'd still be incredible i mean i think it it's like 25 years old now 20 years old more than oh, 20 it's it came out in 1995 so it is about oh to my hit God. its 30th yeah. anniversary that's crazy to me because it was it's one of those rides where I go on it and I was like, if this attraction had opened today, I would be raving about it. You know what I, you know what I mean? It's crazy that I know that not all the effects work for what it originally opened, like the bridge with the ice. And and there are some dark hallways in there that I feel like they could eventually add, figure out something to do in there. But it's like it's a long ride. That ride whips you around like nobody's business. I think it's just one of those like the the, the sound effects are so like, oh like that i will never not like get like whoa like you know get that wow moment 
when you come around that corner and it's like Indiana Jones is like holding the door and the and then you like take the turn and you go in the temple and you like see the massive room in there and you're just like my, I want this jeep to just sit still for a few minutes so I can just like look and pan around and see everything and it just it kind of it's kind of crazy it, I don't it's know the it's thing. Well, yeah. It's funny you say that in that way, though, Rhino. Like, it feels like it could be something built today, except that kind of set design, like, for the main room yeah. that you're riding through, that is not something that I feel like. No, that we would never do today. Right. Yeah. Well, but, I think I think at Rise of the Resistance, they did a good. Uh, I think maybe that's yeah. why Rise for me okay. is, is as good as it is, is because it was, it does have that really detailed set design. But then you look at like Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, but like that's basically all projection based stuff, you know. Yeah. So no, and uh, so you did lawyer me on that one, so I will I will concede. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, you know there there are the areas that you talked about the the dark the hallways and like the last time I was there the rat projection wasn't even working, so it was just like solely you're in a dark area and and that's it. But I think. Part of the reason why the ride works so well is because it is it, it is a well told story. You totally understand everything that you're going through. Like even though the queue is very long and doesn't feel like it's really unraveling everything, I mean, you still get the beats. Like you're starting in Adventureland and you have to go inside this temple where there's this archaeological dig. And as you get further inside, you realize things are a little bit. You know, things are a little bit crazy and it, it might actually be dangerous. And then you get on the ride and things just pick up and you know that, you know, you have to get out of there. Indiana Jones has to get out of there and everyone has to make it out safe. But there's a lot in the way from a giant snake to to, you know, uh, spears Ghost. being shot out from both sides. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> The demons that you said when I was with you last time, you were like, I've never noticed this before. The giant plate of glass that's like the whoo, the demon or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? It's sometimes you notice something for the first time. And that happened to me with Indiana Jones Adventure. And I, I it, and of course, the ride technology, it is the moving motion simulators that you also experience here at Walt Disney World with Dinosaur. It is Dinosaur. the exact same track layout as dinosaur just with a complete different theme which that that does showcase like this is it's so cool that they can they can have the exact same exact same attraction just like mold into a different theme and it takes on a complete different life and that's not to say anything bad about dinosaur it's just you know it dinosaur is a great ride indiana jones is an epic ride it is it is one of the best that Walt Disney Imagineering has ever created. And the only thing that holds it back is the awful Indiana Jones voice actor that's in it. Oh, yeah. Because that is it is one of the worst Harrison Ford impressions ever. When when he was there for Galaxy's Edge, they should have just been like, Can you read some lines for us? You know, just we're not gonna use it for anything in particular. Just just give us a couple line readings. Well, <laughs> say, well say, I Taurus. Think why did the it have to be, be Taurus? <laughs> the I think the story goes though is that he didn't sign off to use his likeness for it, so that's why it's very bad. <laughs> like I I can't remember because there are other Indiana Jones attractions at or were if they're not there anymore um, at other Disney parks, and I remember going down a rabbit hole reading about it one day and about how like. One of them he signed off on, but the rest he didn't want them to use his likeness in for some weird reason. And that's why they like don't really look or sound like him because like no. they have which is insane because you're like, well, they have the right to use the character. So can't they just have lifted dialogue from the movie to make the sound? I don't know. If don't that know was the case, I would assume Raiders or the Raiders scene from Ga Great Movie Ride is probably the one that they used his likeness on because then the other one is uh, Disneyland Paris. They have a roller coaster and that doesn't yes, that yeah. doesn't feature anything. That's just that's just a straight roller coaster and it's not even a very good one at that. It's kind of awful. <laughs> you never know. 
Yeah. But yeah. So Jackie, any input on Indiana Jones adventure? I love, absolutely love that attraction. And it's so funny because like you mentioned, it's, it's the same ride basically as dinosaur at animal kingdom. And it's, but it's so very different. I, I love it. I absolutely love it. And, um, I was really bummed that they didn't have it here. And I think that they need to take out the Indiana Jones show at Hollywood studios and build this ride there. Because it is such a good attraction. It's such a fun ride. And I've I've just always loved it. And I'm not even like a huge fan of the movies. Uh, you know, like, but that attraction, it's just so cool. I love when you go on the bridge and it's like rickety. And I mean, I just love everything about it. It's, um, okay. again, it's a good, it tells a good story. It, yeah. It, and it has the music to back it up. It has the visuals. It has the thrills. It like it has everything for a great thrill ride. But it also, since it's not a roller coaster, it doesn't seem as inaccessible because yeah, it, it's gonna it's gonna tossle you around. But it's not like you have to come over that that fear of heights or anything for it. It's yeah, it's just a solid Did thrill ride. Mm -hmm. Did you guys know that it is the reason why it exists is because Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular at Disney's Hollywood Studios was so popular that that's why Disney Imagineering and George Lucas made this attraction for Disneyland Park? Wow. I did not yeah. know that that was the specific I, I, reason, but that makes sense. I, I'm just looking it up right now because I wanted to see if I could find that thing about him with the uh, voice really quick, but... Uh, also, there is another attraction that's ide almost identical, they say, to this one in um, Tokyo Disney Sea called Temple of the Crystal Skull, uh, or, and no relation to uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. So I don't know if it's still there or not, but I know that there's another one. But yeah. Um, oh. Anyway, I just thought that's that was interesting cool. because I would have guessed that we made the show after like that 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 ride would have been there first but i guess wow. like technically if that show opens like kind of near where the ride was when the i mean if the show opened when the near when the park opened park did and it definitely would have been first yeah, yeah okay so yeah. so it, no that's that's fascinating with it and i will i will just say the only thing i wish with indiana jones adventure is that like I know Rhino's never seen the effect and maybe Jackie did on one of the early trips, but now like when you pull up to the, the set of three doors, it's all done now based on um, yeah projection mapping and there's uh -huh. a different color for the different eye, but that, that door originally used to move um, that whole set of three doors. So it would, you never knew which one you were going to go through. Like obviously the track always went straight forward, but right. the door physically would shift. So it would look like it wouldn't look like you're always going through the center door. Sometimes it would look like you're going through the center one. Sometimes it would look like you're going through the left one, sometimes mm -hmm. the right one. Brilliant, brilliant imagineering on that. But obviously a lot of technical problems that they had to find a better solution for. And you know, it, it is what it is, but I can remember that the first trip I had to Disneyland in 1999, seeing, seeing this attraction in all its glory and it's still good to this day, but yeah, that was, that was some good stuff way back then, but I have it. I have the information before we move on. Harrison got Ford it. was asked to reprise his role as Indiana Jones, but ultimately okay. negotiations to secure <laughs> Ford's participation broke down in December of 1994 for definitively unknown reasons. Instead, Dave Temple provided the voice of Jones. Uh, Ford's physical likeness, however, has nonetheless been used in subsequent audio animatronic figures. That's from the huh. Wikipedia for the, for the ride. So the wild part is it opened in March of 95. It opened on my birthday in March of 95. Yeah. That's oh. that's why I know it. So uh March so 4th was, actually. 
the yeah oh, but wait. they had the you're right it, it's you're, the grand opening is march yeah. 3rd and then it opened to the general public you're right sorry yes you would know better it's your birthday <laughs> yes i do yes i do and i remember i had back then disney used to have like a really nice glossy magazine uh that was i think it was just called the disney magazine and i remember pouring over the issue right around when indiana jones adventure opened up and i was like i need to i need to see this one day and mother and I did. book me the affair yeah, but that's that's a very short turnaround time. Four months where negotiations yeah. fell through, and they had very little time to to turn it all around. That's that's nuts. But what's even more nuts is we're down to our last thing in Adventureland uh, because right now, uh, as of when we're recording this, we don't know what's happening to Tarzan's treehouse in terms of what is replacing that. They've obviously, you know, they removed the entrance and have opened up that area. So it's much easier to walk through now, but we don't know exactly what the next attraction is going to be. We'll probably know in a, a few weeks from now, uh, even less time for when this is released right around D23 Expo, we'll have an answer of what it's going to be. So uh, maybe we'll give you an update when we continue this series on again in the future. But right now, we just have to put a pin in in the tree and come back to that later. Uh, the only other thing, though, in there that we haven't talked about, I mean, there is sh small shopping along that area. I don't think anything really worth uh, pointing out. But Bengal Barbecue is a nice little quick service. And I, I'm going to be honest on this one. For years, I kind of let other people's hype about Bengal barbecue kind of be like, make me like, eh, I don't really care about it. There's, there's other things in this park that I care about more, but, uh, Kylie and, we're in, and I were in a bind with time on our last trip out there. And we had to just give in and go to Bengal barbecue to get something savory very quickly. And we devoured our skewers. We got a beef skewer and a chicken one, and they were not around for very long. And I'm like, you know what? For the price being under $10 and the amount of meat that you get, it is a good protein option that is also just very, very savory. So I'm now, I think I'm now a part of the Bengal barbecue cult, believe it or not. Nice. Uh, it was like the Bengal barbecue bang. But I couldn't I couldn't think of that doesn't really work out. I don't think we ever ate. I, we never ate there. I, well, I recommend it on your next trip. Yeah, you got I you got a mobile order, though. Don't wait in that line. Yeah, I believe that. Uh, well, we waited in the line and it was actually faster than the mobile ordering, except for the person who came up in front of us, cut in front of us. Uh, not directly in front of us, in front of another person. And they didn't say anything either. And then they ordered like 20 skewers. Oh my and, gosh. Like, you've got to be kidding me. We came here because the line was manageable and it was moving through people quickly. And you just, you held us back. But luckily, it was like whoever, who, the person at the register that was taking care of the person was in charge of getting all of theirs. So ours kind of like snuck in and got our food real fast. So we still, uh, we still made it out before he got all of his food. But, yeah, Bengal barbecue. Highly recommend it. And, you know, when you're in that area, also look right beside the the entrance to Indiana Jones Adventure and see the house of the little man at Disneyland. And if you want to know more about the little man at Disneyland, read the, the little golden book that they made about him. And that's all I'm going to say with that. It's a treasure that you should find out on your own. But I think it's like right where the Indiana Jones sign is, the one, the hanging mm -hmm. sign. I think, yeah. yeah. And it, it kind of has overgrown a little bit. I feel like they need to cut it back, but you can still see it. And uh, it's it's cute. It's cute. And then go pick up the little golden book and learn all about them or get it before your trip and then find the house. But yeah, it's it's one of those nice little touches that doesn't need to be there, but it is. And it makes it makes that part of the park a lot more special because of it. But I think we kind of ran through Adventureland here, unless I'm missing something else. No, I don't think so. No, I think right. you got everything. Yeah. No, I mean, you did bring okay. up the shopping. I, I feel like that's this is their shopping over there that you can usually cut through. But every now and then there's like a cool item in there. So, yeah, I, I've never seen I've never bought anything in Adventureland. The only I, I will say in the shopping area. I I feel now terrible because I'm blanking on it. There's the one. um the Aladdin lamp thing. Can't you put like the money in and you can do the wishes or something like that? Did I make that up? Am I making that up? 
I don't remember that. What I was thinking of in the shop was actually Shrunken Ned. And that is, you know, it, Shrunken Ned is in a containment case and you go up and you put your quarters in. I've only done it once because I was there with oh. Teresa and she had quarters. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, who has can them? I yeah. borrow them? <laughs> yeah. Cause actually, no, I, I'll be completely honest. I, she knew I really wanted to do it, and I was embarrassed to ask for it. So she's like, "Here, take it, take it, so you can go do it." And you know, it spits out your card with Shrunken Ned, and uh, and I kept that in my wallet for the longest time. I think it, it disintegrated, so I need another one, or I just like put it as a bookmark somewhere, and I'll find it in in twenty years down the road, and then I'll I'll have it again. But uh, yeah, Shrunken Ned, that's that's one of the things you need to look for in the gift shop. I believe that's like right next to where. Uh, there's the seating area where you can sit and eat your mango at or whatever fruit you might get while you're in Adventureland. They also, I think in the back, I mean, I think it's still there was Aladdin's, um, the lamp was back there, the other lamp or whatever it's called. So it's like a thing where you can put in money and get a wish. I don't know if it spits out, it gives you anything or if it talks to you. It was another one of those things where I was like, well, I don't have coins. So I don't know. I don't know if there's a change machine in there somewhere to help with people with the coins or that you have to go and ask a cast member, but there's, you know, little details in the, in the shopping experiences. I- Rhino, we figured it out. We just have to go with people that we know that still carry cash and have Our change purses purse. and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's it's not us. I'm sure that Jackie, does that fall into you? Do you carry a change purse? I don't. I just have okay. a wallet. Okay. You're you're a little too young then. That's okay. So yeah. uh we'll we'll find someone with change and they will help us yeah. <laughs> at some point in time. But with that, we'll go back on the rails because that's Adventureland for you. Uh I hope you enjoyed our our journey through Adventureland. And if you did, you know, you can always support us by hitting the thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, leaving comments and questions and suggestions if you're watching this through YouTube. And if you're listening to this as a podcast, please subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And if it's through a place where you can leave a rating and review please take the time to do so and you can always support us more by booking a trip through dreams unlimited travel get a free no obligation quote today at dreams unlimited travel.com but rhino and jackie thank you so much for going through Adventureland with me thank you everyone out there for taking the time to listen and watch this and we will see you again soon next time we go off the rails take care bye bye